Coxiella burnesii, the bacteria that causes Q fever, has a worldwide distribution. This bacteria is very resistant to physical and chemical methods of disinfection and is very hardy in the environment. For instance, Coxiella burnesii can survive 7 to 10 days on wool at room temperature, 1 month on fresh meat in cold storage, and 120 days in dust. The organism is, however, killed by pasteurization. It replicates the high numbers in the reproductive tissues and birth products like placenta, fetus, and amniotic fluid, and reproductive organs of infected animals. It is also shed in the urine, feces, and milk of infected animals. Cattle, sheep, and goats are the reservoirs for Coxiella burnesii and are the animals most often implicated in transmission to humans. Animals may become infected by direct contact with infected animals and contaminated environments and or from inhalation of aerosolized bacteria. Birth materials such as placenta, fetuses, and amniotic fluid and milk are the most likely sources of infection. Because the bacterium can survive for years in the environment and travel long distances as an aerosol, dry, windy conditions may contribute to animal exposure and disease transmission. While infection has been confirmed in many species of animals, cattle, sheep, and goats are the primary reservoirs for Coxiella burnesii. In these livestock species, infection typically does not result in any illness, but when illness does occur, it usually results in infections in reproductive organs with clinical signs reflecting that. For instance, in goats and sheep that become ill with Q fever, abortions, stillbirths, and weak kids and lambs are clinical signs that are frequently seen. In cattle with clinical signs associated with Coxiella burnesii infection, abortion and low birth weight calves have been reported. The most common mode of transmission in humans is inhalation of infectious aerosols directly from reproductive tissues and birth products of infected animals or through inhalation of dust contaminated with dried birth fluids or materials. Coxiella burnesii is extremely resistant to physical stresses, including heat and drying and can survive in the environment for months to years. The bacteria can become airborne, traveling on wind currents for miles. Other modes of transmission such as tick-borne, food-borne, and person-to-person -person spread have been reported, but are considered rare. In the United States, Q fever outbreaks have resulted mainly from occupational exposure involving veterinarians, meat processing plant workers, sheep and dairy workers, livestock farmers, and researchers at facilities housing sheep. Individuals who live or spend time near ranches and livestock rearing facilities are at increased risk for infection. While typically thought of as an infection that people with livestock contact will acquire, cases with no known exposure or close proximity to livestock have been reported. Up to half of the people exposed to the bacteria that causes Q fever never become ill. If a person does become ill, that illness may take on an acute or chronic form. The acute symptoms caused by infection with Coxiella burnesii usually develop within two to three weeks of exposure. Acute illness is much more common than the chronic form of Q fever and is typically associated with flu-like symptoms such as high fever, severe headache, muscle aches, and cough. Some of the people who have acute Q fever may have changes in their lungs consistent with pneumonia. Although most persons with the acute Q fever infection recover without complications. A small percentage of people with acute illness have more severe symptoms like liver disease and heart problems. Chronic Q fever is rare and might occur within a few months or years after the initial acute infection. Potential symptoms include inflammation of the heart, liver, or bones. People with a past history of heart problems may be at increased risk of chronic infection and severe disease outcome. People with weakened immune systems, like people receiving cancer treatments or people who have received organ transplants that have become ill with acute disease, may also be more likely to develop the chronic form of Q fever. While, as stated before, the majority of people who become ill with Q fever recover completely, a condition called post-Q fever fatigue syndrome can occur in some of the people who develop acute illness. 
The majority of patients with post-Q fever fatigue syndrome are previously healthy persons who develop a complex of symptoms dominated by a debilitating fatigue after acute Q fever illness. Other symptoms such as nausea, headache, night sweats, difficulty sleeping, depression, and impaired short-term memory might also occur along with the fatigue. 